and I'm going to play a clip now from the Google Moonshot Summit about education. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, because um, we're trying to relate to open educational oh, resources. God. Yes. <laughs> now, John, John, um, I know, I know. There's, uh, you did, so you did confess a few shows ago, it was you who said this on air, that this was the bit where you fell asleep during our... A wonderful attempt at a, a day conference. Yes, it was. <laughs> so we'll see. I mean, I think the listeners will understand. We'll, we'll try and play something that will wake, wake people up in about 20 minutes' time. But meanwhile, this is quite an interesting talk. And it might be possible afterwards to work out what the connection is between sound, MP3, and um, education. Um, so yeah. forth. At least we'll find that out over the next month or so. Okay. Could we get well, on with it? We'll get on with it. Okay. I'm going to play this now. This is called Coming Together to Change the Future of Education. Podcast. Martin Hamilton, JISC's futurist, looks back on his experiences at the Google Moonshot for Education Summit, where 40 EdTech innovators came together to discuss the future of education. He tells us about some of the moonshot thinking to come out of the event. If you could change anything in the education system, what would your moonshot be? This was the question asked of 40 educators, edtech innovators and entrepreneurs from around the world who were invited to Google's Moonshot for Education Summit in Amsterdam at the end of July. I was delighted to be able to attend, representing JISC. For those unfamiliar with the term Moonshot, when President Kennedy announced the Apollo program in 1961, space exploration was just beginning but by 1969, the first people walked on the surface of the moon. A seemingly unthinkable achievement, less than a decade before. Examples of modern day moonshots include driverless cars, personal genomics and personalized medicine, and new materials like graphene. Some of the most innovative of these new technologies are being developed by Google, such as Project Loon, which uses high altitude balloons to provide internet service to rural and hard to reach areas. We just heard that Google will be connecting the whole of Sri Lanka to the internet using Loon. As Google Chief Executive Larry Page stated in a 2013 interview with Wired, it's not easy coming up with moonshots. Where would I go to school to learn what kind of technological programs I should work on? You probably need a pretty broad technical education and some knowledge about organization and entrepreneurship. There's no degree for that. To which we could add one word, yet. So what do we mean by moonshot in education? In an era when all of human knowledge is freely available, online and the nature of work itself is fundamentally changing we have to ask ourselves how the education system needs to evolve to reflect our new realities this is particularly important when we look at the tech skills required for the digital economy A recent study by Deloitte and the University of Oxford found that 35% of existing jobs in the UK are at high risk from automation over the next two decades. 
with jobs paying less than £30,000 a year, are nearly five times more likely to be replaced by automation than jobs paying over £100,000. Meanwhile, the European Commission projects there will be almost a million unfilled tech vacancies across Europe by 2020. Which brings us nicely to the Moonshot Summit. Our hosts for the summit were Esther Wajiki and the EdTech team. Esther is an award-winning teacher from Palo Alto High School in California, Vice Chair of Creative Commons and consultant to Google's education team. Esther has embraced technology in education as a way of liberating and empowering teachers and pupils, as described in her book, Moonshots in Education. In a 2013 interview on the TED blog, JISC Digital Festival keynote speaker Zugata Maitre says, it's quite fashionable to say the education system is broken. It's not. It's wonderfully constructed. It's just that we don't need it anymore. It's outdated. This was a commonly held view amongst the teachers who attended the Moonshot Summit. And we began the event by exploring the delegates' big ideas for transformative change in education. Here are just a few of the what-ifs to come out of those discussions. What will the iPad generation need and expect from college or university? What if children were grouped by ability rather than the date of birth? What if learning was as addictive as Candy Crush or Flappy Bird? What if we eliminated the constant cycle of assessment? What if my other teacher was a robot or an algorithm? And the big one, what if there were no schools? It was telling for me that educators attending the Moonshot Summit largely felt that whilst a quantum leap was required in education, this was not principally about technology. In many ways, the technology we already have is good enough and we are not fully exploiting it. However, there were some examples cited of new technologies that could have a genuinely transformative effect. While we might not see the anthropomorphic robots of 1950s science fiction gliding around the corridors of our schools and colleges anytime soon, apps like Math Bingo and Duolingo's free language learning platform, which now has over a hundred million users worldwide, show how technology can be used to augment and enhance contact hours in the classroom and lecture theater. Four key trends emerged from our initial discussions, resources and teacher support, innovative assessment, equity and agency, engagement and agency. The first two themes in particular struck a chord and correlate well with the recommendations of the UK's Education Technology Action Group, the etag.report, to read those. Delegates overwhelmingly felt that teachers needed support and encouragement to transform their approach from sage on the stage to more of a mentoring and coaching role. 
They also felt that education as a whole should move away from a culture of high stakes summative assessment and teaching to the test to a more incremental approach that recognises and credits students' mastery of their study topics. As things stand, learners are often branded as failures simply because they learn at a different pace to their peers or have different aptitudes. From what ifs we moved on to ideation. Our facilitators from EdTech team formed groups of like-minded individuals to ideate towards projects around these themes that the participants could take away to work with after the Moonshot Summit. We used a design sprint approach for this that would be very familiar to anyone who has participated in JISC's co-design initiative for new R&D projects. I'll pull out the main ideas here. Gamifying the curriculum. Real problems are generated by institutions or companies and transformed into playful learning milestones that once attained grant relevant rewards. Dissolving the wall between schools and community by including young people and outsiders such as artists and companies in curriculum design. Creating a platform where students could develop their own learning content and share it, perhaps like a junior edX. Crowdsourcing potential problems and solutions in conjunction with teachers and schools. A new holistic approach to education and assessment based on knowledge co-creation by peers working together. Creating a global learning community for teachers, blending aspects of the likes of LinkedIn and the Khan Academy. Extending Google's 20% time concept into the classroom, in particular with curriculum co-creation, including students, teachers and the community. So what's next? The Moonshot Summit is now over. But as participants, we are keen to follow up these discussions and explore which of these ideas can usefully be taken forward. While they were largely conceived of with school-age learners and school teachers in mind, there are clear parallels with further and higher education and skills, which I am interested in exploring from a GISC perspective. You can follow hashtag MoonshotEDU on social media to participate in the global dialogue. I'd also love to hear your own Moonshot ideas. Do you agree that education needs a reboot? Do the ideas I've outlined resonate with you? Will your college or university be ready for the iPad generation? Do get in touch. So that was uh, a talk about education. And we did have to wait, John, up. Well, yeah. I think it was interesting talk. Perhaps we should have edited it into shorter pieces for radio. But I think it's important just to get a get a conversation going mm. between how education is sorted out and how I radio is do. sorted out. I bet you do. Anyway, we're going to play some music now. <laughs> Enough of that. Um, so I'm going to play uh, America, uh, Trouble in America. Mm. 